Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going into a dungeon. We're gonna be working cooperatively together to try to get three ancient artifacts and we're trying to then find the exit to get out of the darkness. Today we're talking about Pocket Dungeon Quest from Breaking Games. Uh, again, one to four players, cooperative, takes about 20 minutes to play. Today we're gonna be doing a rules school, which means I'm gonna teach you how to set up the game and play it so that you don't have to read the rules. So let's get going. Pocket Dungeon Quest is a one to four player cooperative game where you're working together going into this 10 by 10 dungeon. You'll be moving in the dungeon and exploring the tiles around you. You'll be rolling the dice to try to defeat monsters. You'll be trying to get gems, but you'll be finding and using different spells throughout the game that give you special abilities. You'll also be getting items that will help you and you're trying to find the three artifacts and get out alive. But there's a lot of different types of monsters to fight, and there's even a boss monster which recruits a lot of these as henchmen. And you're trying to work together to get this done before anyone from your member loses all their health and dies. To set up, you're first going to go through all the tiles and find the four hero tiles. They have a gray background, and they look like this. We have the archer, the warrior, the wizard, and the rogue. You're also going to find all the heart tiles and take those out. Each player is going to select one of these heroes and take three of these heart tiles and place those in front of them. Next, you'll take the 100 tiles that are left after taking all the heroes and the heart tiles out, and you'll put them in a 10 by 10 grid. You'll shuffle them up, and you'll put them like this. Now, this mat does not come with the game. This is an accessory that you can buy that makes setting up and playing the game a little bit easier. But I'm going to use it for this, uh, this rule school because it will help you see a little bit th some things a little bit easier. For example, after you have the 10 by 10 out, you're going to make basically a spot for piles. On each of the corner of the boards will be a pile. This one will be a discard pile. In the bottom right is a merchant pile. In the top right is a monster pile. And in the top left is a gem pile. And these piles are basically places that you'll be storing tiles as you're going through the dungeon as they come out of the dungeon. Now what you're trying to do is work cooperatively together to try and find the three relics in the game and then get out of the exit of the dungeon. And these are shuffled into that 10 by 10 grid. You don't really know where they are. And you're trying to do that before any of the heroes actually die or are not able to be revived. So over the course of the game, you're gonna be going through the dungeon. At the beginning, you can start anywhere. Anytime it's on your turn, you're basically going to move and then flip over all the tiles that are around you. There's theoretically eight tiles if you're in the middle of the dungeon that surround you. So you're always gonna flip over those. So in this case, if I decide to start here, I would flip over all the tiles that touch me in any direction. Now after things are revealed, they go into different stages. First, you'd have to deal with any dangers, resolve any traps or effects that are there first. There aren't any here. Uh, then you'd attack monsters. Then you'd be able to pick up gems if you're still there and alive. And then you'll be able to pick up an, one item or spell. So in this case, there's a monster right here in front of me. Uh, and then there's a, there's a spell and then there's a gem. So let's go through this. So first we would try to attack the goblin. If there's more than one monster, you get to decide what order you attack them. So this is the only one. So we're basically gonna take this die and we are going to roll it. If you get two or more swords, that monster is defeated and simply will just get taken off the dungeon and will be get placed into the monster pile. Now, keep in mind that all monsters just have one hit point. So if you get two more swords, they're done. However, if we did not hit them by getting only one sword or any one of these yellow flashes, it's a miss. Well, what happens is we would lose one heart. This would come out of the game or you could just flip it over to show that, hey, I don't have a heart here. Uh, I've lost one and the monster will also then run away after hitting you and goes into the monster pile as shown before. Now, if instead of just missing, I actually rode this red skull, which is a critical miss. In this case, I would take one damage as normal. The monster would run away as normal, but each monster would then do something special. I'll go over these later in the video at the very end. We'll also talk about what happens if you lose all your health later on as well. After attacking, we can pick up any gems. You're not limited to the amount of gems you can pick up. So they're in values of 5, 10, and 20. And you'll take the gem and you'll put it in the gem pile off to the side. You then can pick up one item or spell. In this case, I'll pick up the spell. I'm going to go over what all these items and spells do a little later in the video as we're just talking about the flow of the game. This would end my turn. It'd be the next player's turn who would follow that process of moving, exploring, and then resolving. Now, when I came back to my turn, it's my turn to move. I can move in any of the directions here to the dungeon. I can move diagonal here, or here. If I moved here, I would end up opening up and showing one, two, three, four, because these are the ones that are surrounding me. Same with here. I would have to flip over one, two, three, four. Here, I only have to flip over one, two, three. So let's do that since that is a little less 
uh, cumbersome and I might fight less monsters. Now that we flip this over, we see a red spiked trap. We have a sword, which is an effect, and we have a relic. Now, if you remember, the first thing you do is you resolve the traps and effects. So the trap always gives you one damage. So I would have to lose one damage and it would get discarded into the discard pile unless you have an item called the multi-tool. You can carry up to two items. And if you had the multi-tool, you could have just discarded this without taking the damage. But if you didn't have this, this would have taken a damage and gone in the discard pile. Now this effect will go with you and the next time you roll a dice, you'll get a plus one to it. There's one other effect tile in the game. It's a broken sword, which essentially is a minus one. So essentially you would take this on and this would be yours. And the last thing here is a relic. It's not considered an item. It does not go towards your normal um, amount of two items by default that you can have. So essentially you're gonna put this in front of you. And again, you try it as a team to get three of those and find the exit. Now those relics can never go away when someone dies. So let's talk about actually what happens when you do die. Let's say I only had one health left. I rolled, I missed. Uh, or this person hit me, and let's just say that this person did my last damage. Any items or monsters that were also around here would get uh, removed into their respective piles, and now I would be dead. But each other player has one more turn to be able to try to revive me. And this can be done by using the feather spell. If someone has that, they can use it to revive you. Otherwise, if it gets back to your turn and you're dead, well, the game's over and you've lost. Let's talk about some of the other spells. Now, these items and spells, unless otherwise stated, they can only use one of these per turn, and you can use it on yourself or on another player, but it's still, you can only use one per turn. Now, on the top, we have items. Here we have the potion going left to right, and that can heal our heroes one health point. So essentially, you get one heart back. The next one is the big bag. It doesn't count towards your item limit. In fact, it actually increases it, and now you can actually hold up to three items. The next one is a multi-tool. It disarms a trap, as we showed you earlier. If a trap comes out, you can use that to disarm it with Without taking any damage. The next one is the bomb. It can do one of two things. It can be used to clear a dungeon wall. We haven't talked about these yet, but in the dungeon there are some walls that you cannot go around and you can use that to take that out. Or you can also use it to make a direct hit in combat. The move spell allows you to take an additional turn, as we just talked about. The feather spell allows you to revive a dead hero. The teleport allows you to basically swap a hero or a monster to any valid spot in the dungeon. The foresight spell allows you to reveal any three tiles in the dungeon. The confusion spell allows us two monsters to fight each other. Essentially, you'd choose one monster as the attacker, you'd roll the die. Uh, if it's a hit, essentially both monsters are uh, you know, put into the monster pile off the board. If it misses, then he hits himself and he's into the, dis into the monster pile, but you still have to fight the other monster. If you roll a critical miss, well, you still just have to fight both monsters like normal. And the last one here is the swap spell. You can swap any two tiles in the dungeon, whether they're revealed or not. Now back to those monsters. We mentioned earlier that if you get a critical miss, each of these monsters does something different. The goblins, first of all, they steal, basically discards, one gem randomly from the gem pile. For the flayer, basically the, the hero loses their next turn. For the blob, basically steals, discard one item from the hero's inventory. The minotaur deals an additional one damage point to the hero. The Skelly Archer stays on the dungeon floor and must be attacked on the next turn before the hero takes any other actions. And this is the boss, you haven't seen this yet, and that one deals one point of damage to all heroes. So let's talk about this boss in more detail. If you come across the boss, you'll roll this die. If any amount of swords are there, you'll be pulling two henchmen, monsters that is, out of the monster pile and putting them on that boss monster. If you roll a yellow flash, you'll be taking four henchmen, and if it's a critical miss, it'll be six. And you're pulling them from the monster pile there. You'll put them right on top. Let's say we had rolled a yellow flash, so there's four henchmen on there. Now, if there aren't enough, you would each player would take turns flipping one tile and putting, getting the right amount of henchmen to put on top of there. You would basically discard any traps and any items go in, into their normal piles and the gems would go into their gem piles. Then starting with this player and going throughout the other players, regardless of where they are in the dungeon, we'll each try to fight these uh, henchmen. And if you essentially don't hit them, they do not run away like normal monsters, but you take damage as normal. Essentially, you have to go through all of these and then get to the boss and then defeat the boss with one point just like normal. And fighting the boss would happen until you either defeated the boss or all the parties have been defeated. Now, if you reveal the merchant who has a gray background with a big beard like this, then starting with this player, 
everyone can buy from him once per turn for 30 gems they can buy something from the merchant tile it doesn't matter whether you're next to him or not everybody on their turn can buy once from the merchant for 30 gems now here's the merchant pile this gets filled by when people have a full allotment of items they have two already and they want to pick up another one they can simply put one of their items into the merchant pile face down to pick up a third item now once once this pile starts having things here and you're trying to buy things from the merchant essentially you spend your 30 gems from the gem pile you discard those and then you can basically randomly pull two tiles off the top of here You'll keep one and then shuffle one back in face down into that. And again, anybody can buy it on their turn, just one per turn. Now there is one mount in the game and you, this one is a unicorn. And you basically take this right away. It does not count as an item. And what the unicorn allows you to do is this is a wall. Normally you cannot go through it. You'd have to go around it, but you can use this as if it was a valid open spot in the dungeon. And then you would flip these over like normal. Now each of these heroes has a special ability going from left to right. The warrior gets a permanent plus one to their attack roll. The archer can re-roll an unfavorable attack once per turn. The wizard can use two items or spells per turn instead of just the one. And the rogue can steal, which is taking an item from the dungeon floor before attacking. And if everybody's still alive and you're able to find all three relics and the exit, you've won the game. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into the game without having to read the rules. If you have any further questions about them, go ahead and leave them as comments, and we'll do the best we can to answer them.